everyone, welcome to my review of Dune. This game was released in 1993, originally on the PC. It's one of the very first first person shooters and it's available for you to play on the Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation Network, pretty much everywhere. So I'm here to show you whether or not this game is worth purchasing. So without further ado, let's fire up the Xbox Live Arcade and see what this game is all about. Oh, Doom. So violent, so scary, so primitive, so... aged. This game is made by a company called id. These guys have released all sorts of games, but their most famous ones are Wolfenstein, Quake, and of course, Doom. This franchise got introduced to me and I want to say around 97 or 98. My dad was playing one of the spin-off titles known as Final Doom. So this was the game that I started on and I gotta say, it scared the living shit out of me. Nowadays this franchise really isn't that scary, but there might be a couple times where it'll make you jump. My mom being the religious person she is, hated this game and the thought of me playing it. I was always like, what's the big deal? I'm killing demons for God's sake. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, but with personal memoirs aside, let's begin with the story. Surprisingly, Doom has a very intricate story, but it's not told in the game. So once again, with the mighty power of Google, I've been able to figure out what it is. So please excuse the lack of cutscenes. You assume the role of an unnamed space marine. The game doesn't state what his name is, so we're gonna call him Doom Guy. Doom Guy was sent to Mars for disciplinary reasons for assaulting and killing his commanding officer. Yeah, he was probably an overpaid fuckhead anyway. The Martian Space Marine Base acts as security for the UAC, or Union Aerospace Corporation, a multi-planetary conglomerate which is performing secret experiments with teleportation by creating gateways between the two moons of Mars. This all changes when the UAC experiments go horribly wrong. Computer systems on one moon malfunction and the other one disappears altogether with something that's evil pouring out of the gateway that's killing or possessing all the UAC personnel. Responding to a frantic distress call from the overrun scientists, the Martian Marine Unit is sent to Phobos, the moon that's still standing, to investigate. Upon arriving, Doomguy is left to guard the perimeter with nothing but a pistol while the rest of the team investigates. He hears assorted radio messages, gunfire, and screams, all followed by silence, which kicks off the first episode of Doom called Knee Deep in the Dead. In this episode, Doomguy is the last man standing, and the only way for him to get off of Phobos is to travel to each location and fight through the onslaught of demonic enemies that it holds. He succeeds in finding the portal to transfer him off Phobos, however, instead of transporting him back to Mars, he gets transported to Deimos, the second moon that mysteriously disappeared when the onslaught began. This kicks off the second episode, Shores of Hell. In this episode, Doomguy must travel through all the locations of Deimos, taking on the onslaught of demons once again. During his travels though, he noticed that the demons are taking orders from somebody, a general if you will. He then makes it his mission to track down and kill the demon that's barking out all the orders, killing as many of his minions in the process as he can, because it's more fun that way. Doomguy finally meets up with the demon's general, known as the Cyber Demon. And after a long, drawn out fight with rocket launchers, Doomguy emerges victorious. But after defeating the Cyber Demon, Doomguy looks over the shores of the moon to see that it's floating above Hell itself, where the mastermind of the entire demonic onslaught lies, which kicks off the last episode called Inferno. It's in this episode that Doomguy must once again take on the hordes of demonic enemies to reach the mastermind behind the entire invasion and stop them from going to planet Earth. He fights his way through Hell and defeats the spider mastermind that planned the invasion, opening the portal back to Earth. With his mission successful, Doomguy steps in the portal to go back to Earth. But upon his arrival, Doomguy is greeted with the dead bodies of his friends and family and even his pet rabbit Daisy. The demons had successfully managed to invade Earth. This kicks off the events of Doom 2, Hell on Earth. But that's a review for another time. Well that covers the story. As you can see, it's a little bit more intricate than the other classic games I've reviewed so far. My only real complaint though is that you have to look it up to understand what it is. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get on with the gameplay. Alright, compared to the first person shooters we have nowadays, the gameplay on here is really not that spectacular. But think back to the early 90s when first person shooters were still a new thing. Id, the company that made this game and all the others I mentioned earlier, single handedly made first person shooters cool. And it's hard to harp on this game because it's so old. And here's how it works. Once again, you control his Doom guy and your mission is to kill as many demons coming out of hell as you possibly can. But since you start with a pistol, you need to be procuring any weapons and ammo that you find. Your weapons vary from a shotgun, a chain gun, a rocket launcher, a plasma gun, a chainsaw, 
And finally, my personal favorite, the big fucking gun 9000. The good thing about all these weapons though is that there isn't a single useless one besides the pistol. And unless you start a new game or die, you'll never be forced to use the pistol. And your chances of running out of ammo are pretty slim because the game is very generous with its pickups. Yeah, seriously, there won't be a single time where you're out of ammo for more than one weapon. Other pickups include color-coded keys that you need to use to open up specific doors, and power-ups to tip the scales in your favor even more. The power-ups include this invincibility one here that does exactly what you think it does, at the cost of your vision. You've got the partial invisibility power-up that doesn't make you undetectable to enemies, but it does increase your chances of dodging their projectiles. You've got the Berserk power-up that completely heals you and gives you extra strength so you can punch out the enemies. But I tend to ignore these unless I really need health. You've got the Radiation Shielding Suit that'll allow you to walk on acid and for some reason lava without taking any damage. And finally, you have the Mega Morph power-up that'll give you 100% health on top of what you already have. The max is 200%. All in all, the power-ups are very useful. If you're playing on a higher difficulty setting, you'll be hoping that these power-ups are behind the secret doors that the game will occasionally throw at you. Now, the secret rooms are just that, secret. But some of them are easier to spot than others. Some of them are just a simple matter of finding a discolored wall, and others you have to step in a specific spot to have an elevator get lowered. And sometimes the secret rooms don't even have power-ups in it. Sometimes it just has a really powerful demon that you now have to kill. So make sure you're opening secret doors with caution. And as far as enemy variety is concerned, I think it's pretty good here. Some demons look more menacing than others, but none of them have a special way of taking them down. All you have to do is just keep shooting and shooting and shooting until they finally decide that they've had enough. And all of them are completely original. None of them are shamelessly recolored like they are in later games in the franchise. As far as control is concerned, Doom Guy controls pretty well. He moves in 8 directions, but just like Mega Man, he can only shoot directly in front of him. Yeah, you can't aim up or down. So to counteract this, if you see an enemy up on a ledge, just aim in their general direction and shoot. The bullets will automatically hit what you're trying to aim at. As far as difficulty is concerned, these are the ones you get to choose from. I'm Too Young to Die being the easiest, and Nightmare being the hardest. Now as a whole, the game is not that hard, unless you're playing on Nightmare mode, because the enemies will respawn behind you. Which also adds on to the horror aspect of the game, I think. Graphically speaking, I'd say the game is passable. The animations work pretty well, and it's about what you would expect from an early 90s video game. And I must say, I really enjoy the soundtrack on here. It's mostly fast-paced hard rock and metal, so it's not exactly up everybody's alley, but I like it a lot. And it's also fun to mention that co-op is available here on Doom as well. You and up to three other people can play the campaign of Doom together. The campaign and the story within it doesn't change at all, but friendly fire is on and it's always satisfying to blow your teammate up when he thinks he's got you. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Crypto. And that covers Doom. In conclusion, I think the game is pretty damn good. But I don't feel like the game is aged too well. Just like Sonic, this game has been ported so many times and you can find it anywhere. It ages the game in a negative way. So with its primitive graphics, its okay gameplay, and its outstanding soundtrack, I've come to the overall score of a 5 out of 10. This game is something that you play when you're feeling nostalgic, but there's so many other first-person shooters out there that do the genre better justice. But with all that out of the way, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed my video, give me a like, a share, and a subscribe. Also, like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. The links are in the description below. Tune in for my next video. I'm going to be reviewing Mega Man for the Nintendo Entertainment System. We'll see you there. But in the meantime, you guys have a great night, and take care. for the PC. <sighs> Should have reversed this a bit better. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to my review of my review uh, worth purchasing. Fuck. Um, well, pretty much everything. Nope. Fuck. Then say the other. Fuck. Well,